Oh yeah. There's a lot of driving in this movie. Alright, so Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is Quentin Tarantino's ninth film. He says he's done after 10, but we'll see if that comes for fruition. And it reteams him up with Leonardo DiCaprio as Rick Dalton and Brad Pitt as Cliff Booth, his stunt double, who are in the who are basically fading away from the movie industry and they're just trying to get back to their glory days in the late 60s and Ray Dalton's having trouble remembering his lines Cliff is having trouble getting stunt work and so it really becomes a story about these two friends hanging out trying to get back to the to where they once were now I'm not a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino I enjoy some of his movies I haven't seen all of them I think that Hateful Eight is my favorite movie and a lot of people were going into this movie with a lot of trepidation because the way it was pitched was a story about the Manson murders and bringing in Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate caused some people with some red flags because he they didn't know, we didn't know how he was going to handle the murders. Now I can say this, at 2 hours and 41 minutes I think this is a long movie that needed to be cut down a little bit or just added a little bit more. Um, I think from my pros, I think Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt had wonderful chemistry. The acting, the writing, the directing was phenomenal. The scenery, all the set pieces that recreated Hollywood in the late 60s were great. and. I think while everybody had some kind of role to play, there were a couple times that it felt like this was Quentin Tarantino's entourage because it felt like it was famous person after famous person after famous person. You got Kurt Russell, you got Luke Perry, you got Bruce Dern, Dakota Fanning, uh, Maya Hawking, and, and Timothy Oliphant. And I think after a while, that's just what it felt. It felt like Quentin Tarantino's entourage movie. And even though I had no problems with that, I think everything flowed as well it could be. The two hours and 41 minute runtime does fly by and there is never a time that you're ever going to be bored because it's just scene after scene after scene after scene and the momentum that this movie goes at is a really nice slow burn that has a huge payoff during the final 20 minutes of this film now if i had some cons there are a couple cons this isn't a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination but i think like i said before there are a couple times that there are characters that pop in that don't need it to be in there. I think that if you took out or did something better with Margot Robbie's Sharon Tate, I think the movie would have not only been shorter, but it could have elevated the film a little bit more because I feel like Margot Robbie was underutilized. There wasn't a lot for her to do in this movie. It mainly focused on Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio as these two struggling actors and stuntmen and Sharon Tate and the uh, Manson murders were just basically in the background like he already said it would be. One thing that you can also remove from the film is a lot of the driving scenes because at first I didn't mind it but the more that they, the more that it happened I think if they drag on a little bit and that kind of exceeded the runtime a little bit too. Outside of that no other cons but I think that even though this is a slow burn, there's a lot that you can uh, dissect from this film. Um, those are, I think that's my only con for this movie is that with the caliber that Margot Robbie has, I think you could have done something better with the Manson murders or you could have done something better with Sharon Tate because I do think that when Margot Robbie shows up, she lights up the place like she always does. And I think that when you have her, I think she there's a lot more that you could do with her. And I just wish that they elevated her character a little bit more towards the beginning, the end, the middle. And I think for the most part, you could have really cut down or utilized everything else a little bit more. Outside of that, I think this is almost a perfect film. I enjoyed this movie freely. The last 20 minutes of this film are, in my opinion, probably would be better than Endgame's final 20 minutes. And I think if you are a Quentin, 
If you are a Quentin Tarantino fan, you'll enjoy this movie for what it is. If you don't like a slow burn, this movie probably won't be for you. But I think, in my humble opinion, I think this is probably my second favorite film of the year so far. And probably second favorite, maybe my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie that I've seen so far. And I hope he says that he's done after 10 Let's see if that's true. I really hope that's not true because I really do enjoy his work. And if even if he's done at 10, he does leave a really great legacy uh, behind, especially with this film. I think if you really like set pieces and you like a slow burn, this will be the movie for you. The, three, the two and a half hours really do fly by. There's never a moment when you're checking the time. There's almost never time for a bathroom break. There are a couple times when um, when Sharon Tate shows up a little bit. But other than that, I think this is a fantastic film. I think everybody will enjoy this film. Not everybody, but I think most of the people will enjoy this film. I'm going to give Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a 9 out of 10. So have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of it. Did you agree with my opinions? Do you disagree? Let's have a discussion down in the comment section. Until next time, this is Josie at the Movies.